Welcome back, everyone. Today, we're continuing to talk about the command of Christ, go to offenders. Jesus gave this command in Matthew 18, 15, where he said, Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. Gabe, in this episode, we want to talk about practically how would this apply to everyday life? Do you want to go ahead and start us? Well, I think as we consider this command, go to offenders, and just seeing the heart of the Lord that for restoration, that we saw that the heart of of this command is gaining your brother, that you go and, and, and you speak to him with a, with a heart of with humility and seeking restoration. I think it would be a good place to start would be thinking of the things that hinder us maybe from going to our offenders. And I think one of the things is, is you know, the thing about going to offenders, the reason the person's an offender is because they've offended us. Mm -hmm. And I think that sometimes when someone's, well, always when someone's offended us, it's a hard thing. And sometimes we can have the tendency instead of going to them, instead of taking it to the Lord and casting it on him and then going to them and, and seeking to clear it up. Sometimes what happens instead of doing those things, we start to hold on to it and we start thinking on it and dwelling on it. I can't believe what they said. I can't believe what they did and how could they? And we kind of play. It's almost like an instant replay in our mind of what they said and what mm -hmm. they did and how they had no right to say that. And oh man, you know, I can't believe that. Now mm -hmm. they caused this and look at. And what happens is, is instead of going to our offender, instead of resolving, instead of walking in forgiveness, what gets planted in our heart is a root of bitterness. Mm -hmm. I think when a seed of bitterness gets planted down into our heart it 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 affects those around us it affects mm -hmm. us in our walk with god um he, uh in in the book of hebrews chapter 12 it talks about how when a root of bitterness springs up it troubles us it, it it um it it defiles those around us so so i think we have to be watchful and careful that when an offense comes against us that we don't start harboring bitterness because if boy if we're holding on to bitterness we're mm -hmm. going to be tremendously hindered from going to our offender and here's the danger nate if we are holding on to bitterness even if we do go to our offender, mm -hmm. we'll tend to go in an attitude of wanting revenge or go That's to an right. attitude of anger, frustration, or with the wrong spirit, um, and, and and that will not achieve the desired result. In other words, that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Mm -hmm. Gabe, I'd like to stop you there because I think what you mentioned actually prior to going to our offender is going to the Lord. And Gabe, that's where this answer really is because if even if we do go to our offender, if we haven't sorted it out in our mind, if you will, if we haven't laid it before the Lord, if we haven't allowed the light of his Holy Spirit to um, give us wisdom and understanding on that matter, you know, really the bottom line of restoration of an offender, it's not really our work. It's really God's work. And when we first go to the Lord, get our own heart right before the Lord, God will then, and, and humble ourselves before the Lord in that way, God will then begin to give us his grace mm -hmm. to be able then to properly, with the right heart and attitude, go to our offender. That's so true because we need to take it to him because when we take the offense, the trespass to him, um, and, and we pray it through with him, he's able then to give us his heart mm -hmm. and his love for this brother yes. that's has sinned against us or erred. Um, and, and, and then we're able to operate from a place of the Lord's perspective instead mm -hmm. of our perspective, which is huge. Because here's what I think, Nate, is I think that so many churches have split, not over key doctrinal issues, but because of unresolved offenses and bitterness between different members in the that's church. That's right. And so I think that because obviously we know God's goal is the unifying of his body. Um, and so Satan's goal is division, right? Mm -hmm. And so, and this is a huge area. These companies tried to bring schisms in the body mm -hmm. because of offenses, unresolved, and bitterness. And so I think we have to be watchful. Scripture even talks about looking diligently that a root of bitterness wouldn't spring up. And so one thing that can hinder us from going to offenders is if we harbor or hold on to bitterness. And really right. we need to go, we need to take it to the Lord, we need to forgive, and we need to go to the offender from a place of forgiving um, right. and it's interesting because if you look in the context remember context is so important in the scriptures if you look at the context of this is that right after jesus talks about going to offenders and the other things that he shares there and the, the working through of matthew 18 you know what he goes into next 
forgiveness. Mm. Um, because then Peter kind of responds, says, well, how often should I forgive my brother? Right. Seven times? And they're like, how often do I have to? And I think that Peter thought, wow, seven times? That's shooting high. I know, right? <laughs> um, you know, and, 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 and he said, no, 70 times seven. I think he was referring an infinite number of times. And he gives a parable um, to demonstrate just the importance of, of forgiveness and, and basically illustrating that we've been forgiven so much. How can we not mm. then extend that to other people? Amen. And I think when a hurt comes in our life, um, when someone offends us and trespasses against us, it's critical. It is critical that we remember how much we've been forgiven That's of. That's right. And how we've made some of the same mistakes that this person yep. did against us. And when we realize how much we've been forgiven mm-hmm. of, it's from that place that we can then go to our brother and say, you know what, I don't deserve forgiveness, but God's forgiven me, so I forgive you too, and I want you to be restored. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and we go with that heart of love and care. So I think another thing that can hinder us, though, from going to our offenders is when we don't go to our offenders, instead we go to other people first. <laughs> um, people yeah. that are, and, and we go to other people that aren't, aren't necessarily involved in the situation and we start to talk mm-hmm. um, about the situation and we tend to go to other people that will agree with us and that will have our side of the story. I call this when we're kind of, it kind of gets into sort of the, the, the gossip and we kind of have a little bit of some self-pity because we were offended mm-hmm. and we were hurt and we, there was that trespass against us and so we kind of get that little groupie of people that would agree with us, you know, and pretty soon the whole church knows except for the people that wouldn't agree with us, you know, and, and I call it the the inverted Matthew 18. In other words, we do it backwards. <laughs> we go to the right. whole church and then finally we go to the person. It doesn't work. That's not how the Lord mm-hmm. said to do it. Um, and, and, and that is a tremendous hindrance. I, I remember one time the Lord just challenged me in an area of my life where I remember um, just someone had, had I thought mishandled a situation and had done some things that were not the best in the way that they'd handled something and I and, 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 and weren't handling something in the best way and I and it, it, it affected me and, and, and so I remember talking about it but I was talking about it with other people you know and people that I knew would agree with me and be like yeah you know because what we're looking for when we talk about it with other people is boy you're right man they shouldn't yeah. have done that boy yeah. you know oh man I I feel so sorry for you <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and we want that that, that feed to self pity but boy that's not that's not what God wants for us. Right. He doesn't want us to be sitting and wallowing in self-pity, which ultimately leads to bitterness and hindrance. And I believe that at that time, there were certain things the Lord wanted to do in and through my life. And it was somewhat hindered because I was holding on mm-hmm. to this bitterness. And so anyways, God had to give me, bring me to a place of forgiveness and different mm-hmm. things. But just realizing that when we go to the Lord and then we go directly to the offender, we're really going to a place where it can be resolved. That's and right. instead of slipping into self-pity or slipping into getting our groupie of other people to agree with us, mm-hmm. we go to the offender. Why? Because our heart is restoration. That's it's right. the same heart the Lord has. So I think these are two key areas to be watchful for that can hinder us in going to offenders. I think you're right, Gabe. And I think if we do do it the opposite way, the reversed way, going to others, well, a lot of times it... it Really, honestly, it starts with that bitterness, holding it in our own heart. Um, and a lot of that bitterness is based on, I think, lies and, and, and even things that we don't even know are true because we haven't even gone to our offender yet. Mm. We don't even know the full story yet. But I think in doing it the opposite way, when we do finally get to approaching the offender, we've shut almost every door possible to enter through for that offense to be made right. Yeah, that's so true. You know, they're not at that point. You know, when they've heard that you've told so and so and so and so knows and that person knows and this, and this you know, it would t- it would almost be a miracle for that person to actually make that offense right. Um it would take great humility <laughs> on their part. But when we go to the Lord first, then we don't stop there, but we go in the right heart and attitude to the offender alone as the first step. There is a greater chance of gaining his ear and having that offender be restored. Um, not only in a right relationship with us, but primarily what's the bottom line of going to our offenders? It's uh, honestly, I- I've said this before, I'm going to say it again, is it's not restoration with me. Really, if you look at the context, I think, of Matthew 18, it's restoration with God. You know, yes, they might have offended me, but that shouldn't be my primary concern. My primary concern should be they're walking in a way that's going to hurt them in their personal relationship with God. And then beyond that is going to damage the body. Mm -hmm. So if we look at it from that perspective, I think, you know, we can come and approach our offender with the the right heart and the right attitude. My dad used to say, don't involve another person in a problem. 
unless they're A, part of it, or B, part of the solution to it. Um, because the tongue, James talks about the tongue being a world of iniquity. It's like a fire, a world of iniquity. And unless our tongue is under the control of the Holy Spirit, it'll either do one of two things. If it's under the control of the Holy Spirit, it'll bring healing and health and restoration. But if it's under the control of anything other than the Holy Spirit, it'll bring damage, death, discouragement. Uh, and it will to be the opposite of restoration. Well, and I think it's important to consider, too, when we talk about going to offenders. You know, we talked earlier in an earlier episode as well, and I'm highlighting here, too, the importance of going to the offender first and, and going to them alone and seeking mm-hmm. to make that relationship right before we tell other people. And I think that one clarifying point I would say with this is if what our offender done, if it has broken the law— then we do need to go to the civil Correct. authorities and tell them what's been right. done because scripture talks about the civil authorities are mini- his ministers for That's good. That's exactly right. So if someone's broken the law, then we need to go to the civil authorities, right? right. And, 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 you know, so that they can deal with that person in the proper way that God designed mm-hmm. and put that structure in. But I think oftentimes the offenses that come against us aren't those kind of violations. Yes. Usually it's, you know, things that were said that were maybe, you know, hurtful or things that were, you know, different or, 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 or you know, unmet expectations or just different things mm-hmm. that we face in life and those areas are where it's so important to, to go to the mm-hmm. offender and to seek it to make it right and realize the just God's heart for for that person right and Gabe I think a little bit more clarification for our listeners because what if what offenses do we go to our offenders about you know we're not talking about oh they didn't look at you know they looked at me wrong or something or they didn't I didn't like the way they dressed or you know we're not talking about preferences here Actually, if you look at our command in Matthew 18, verse 15, it says, Moreover, if thy brother shall, and it uses a specific word, trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. If he shall bear thee, thou shalt have hast gained thy brother. The word trespass there, if you look it up, Gabe, in the Greek, hmm. basically it is in connection with sin or missed the mark. And so it's not even, you know, in order there to, for there to be a genuine offense, they would have had, had to have violated God's word, you know, God's law. And so ultimately the offense is not even really against me, it's against the Lord. And my desire to go and to help restore them is to restore them back mm-hmm. to the Lord. And so, Gabe, I think when we talk about, okay, so what offenses should mm-hmm. I go and confront an mm-hmm. offender about? Um, I think first and foremost, I have to see this is not about me. This is not about, um, you know, gaining one up on this person or showing them that they were wrong. This is about restoring a brother to a right relationship with the Lord that's not, that's, that's going to keep him from damaging himself in his spiritual walk with God, and that's going to keep him from damaging the body of Christ as a whole. I think that that's that's so true. And I think the other the other thing that's huge here is just that another aspect of going to offenders, just really practically, is allowing the Lord to search my own heart before I go. Ooh, that's a big one. Because I think sometimes what can happen is, well, first I'll just say this is that sometimes we're best at spotting at other people what's in us. I know that's true in my life. <laughs> and so I think we have to we have to allow the Lord to search our heart and deal with us first. Mm-hmm. Um, deal with maybe even the specific area we're addressing the other that's person right. to deal with us first. Because one thing that offenders will tend to react to, like everybody does, is hypocrisy. So if I'm saying that they shouldn't be doing it, they're like, well, you're doing it in another mm-hmm. way, you know, and, 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 and things that way. So I think allowing the Lord to search our hearts to, you know, the scripture says when a man's ways please the Lord, he make even th- even his enemies to be at peace with him. So I think before we go to an offender, it's important that we make sure that our ways are mm-hmm. pleasing to the Lord. You know, we, we have that prayer, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me to the way everlasting. Because is there, Lord, is there areas of bitterness and unforgiveness? Because mm-hmm. if we go with an unforgiving spirit or, and this is a big one, sometimes we can go to an offender, but we can go with an attitude of pride. And so if I have an attitude of pride in approaching my offender and kind of like, well, you're not, guess what you did. And look at how it hurt. And you need to make, if I have that attitude, here's the, here's the thing that's so serious about this, is that the person may reject what I told them. 
not because they were rejecting the truth, but they were rejecting the spirit that I that's brought right. in. That's right. Wow. And so I think that's why it's so important that we have to not. It's not about becoming introspective, but really coming to the Lord and saying, "Okay, Lord, I'm, I need to go to this person. It's mm. what your word says I'm supposed to do. But first of all, would you just show me? Is there anything in my life that's coming between me and you? Or is mm. there? Or am I having a spirit of pride or unforgiveness at all in approaching this person, mm-hmm. so that we can approach in the right spirit? Because if our heart is like God's heart, then our heart's cry is for restoration. And so we want to remove any barrier that would hinder the other mm-hmm. person from receiving it and me co- coming in unforgiveness or coming in pride will hinder that person to receiving it but if i have a humility a brokenness over my sin mm-hmm. awareness of how much i've been forgiven of and i come in that spirit that's the most likely way that that person's going to receive what i'm telling them it is gabe that attitude is, is a must is a must if we want to again what is our command it's go to offenders mm-hmm. why to gain our offender you know it's not to prove them wrong it's to mm-hmm. gain them it's to bring them back um, this is what Matthew, what we're talking about is really what Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 7, verse 5. He says, thou hypocrite. Mm-hmm. And, and he's talking about judging others um, in a condescending, pharisaical way. He says, thou hypocrite, cast out the beam out of thine own eye. And then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. Jesus doesn't say, well, you can't go at all. But he says, first deal with what's in your own life. Mm -hmm. And then once you've done that, Gabe, I think what that does is that opens up the door. Once we realize our own shortcomings, Mm -hmm. right? Once we realize how much we need God. Mm -hmm. Once we realize how much without the mercy and the grace and the forgiveness Mm -hmm. of God in our life, you know, you know, there would be no hope. Once we Mm -hmm. realize that, what that'll do is it, it, will be able to walk in a spirit of humility and through humility mm-hmm. god will pour out his grace to be able to go in a gracious humble kind um restorative manner to our brother to help them in that offense and i think if we come like you're saying in that humble gracious attitude and spirit we're going to come with the approach of what was the offender thinking when they did what they did? We're going to try to see it from right. their perspective yes. and understand where they were coming from so that we can best help them see their their, their offense and see them the path to to, to um to coming to a you know a place of, of, of freedom. And we're gonna to try to see it from their perspective because sometimes what'll happen is is we'll think we see a situation really clearly and this person was wrong and that's the, just the way it is. But sometimes when we humble ourselves and mm-hmm. we um, and we and we start looking at the situation from their perspective. Mm-hmm. We need to see, okay, was did they actually violate God's word, right. or was there just a misunderstanding here? Because there's exactly. a difference, there right? Is a they, big difference. If they violated God's word, there needs to be repentance. Right. But if there was just a misunderstanding, that can be cleared up. And, right. I, and another aspect of that of coming in humility is coming asking questions, asking for clarification. You know, sometimes we may have only heard one side of an issue. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we only know our side. Um, yeah. And and so if we go to that person and we say, okay this happened what what we and asking questions and those questions will do one of two things the questions will will show humility first of all mm-hmm. but it'll do on our part because we're not coming as a know-it-all but then most questions do one of two things they will either expose the fact that we must understood and the person had that exactly sin, or it will expose to the person themselves that they had sinned and where they violated right. god's word and it brings a path for for that um, offense to be made right and restoration to happen. So, but for for those things to happen, for us to see it from their perspective, for us to to ask questions, we really need to come in a spirit of humility. You know, we even saw in Galatians when it talks about um, when someone's taken in a fall, it says either to spiritual st- restore such a one, but it says in a spirit of meekness. And I think that's mm-hmm. some of the coming in the spirit of meekness and humility, where we don't come with an attitude of pride and know it all and, and, and condescension, but an attitude of humility that we might see them restored. And Gabe, as we conclude this episode here, as we're talking about practical things, I think coming with a more um, a questioning, open mind, open heart, wanting to see and understand their perspective is coming on a neutral ground. It's going to open up the conversation to to a degree that if I was to come with, well, let me tell you what you did wrong without even knowing their side or how they felt or why they did what they did you know you know if we if we come without that humble you know questioning open attitude then it will shut the doors for Mm -hmm. restoration to happen and so for our listeners we hope that this has sparked a desire and a hunger in you to restore 
people back to a right relationship with the Lord. And you know, that really starts with us. It really starts with our own heart before the Lord. It really starts with our own attitudes. Mm -hmm. And as the Lord begins to work that out in our own life, we can go with a gracious, humble attitude. And God will give us that proper love, that pure, genuine love to see other brothers and sisters who might be stumbling, who might be erring out of the way, who might be in sin, and to restore them, to, to help restore them to a right relationship with the Lord. So we hope that you join us on our final episode. That's our next episode as we conclude this command, bringing some of these thoughts on the command of Christ, go to offenders to a conclusion. So God bless you, and we hope you join us then.